What came out of the summit was the harmonizing of our views <coughs> on the matter that we met about of Burundi. Uh, firstly, I think um, looking closely to the matters of uh, Burundi, I think it was clear that uh, <coughs> the manner in which uh, their constitution uh, is written has left a gray, a, some gray area, which needs to be looked at. It's not like yes, uh, it's, it's yes or no. So it's a matter, firstly, that needs uh, some understanding, some discussion among the world. The information is that the matter was taken to the parliament, and the parliament had a different view. And then the matter was taken by another house of parliament to the Constitutional Court, and the Court had a particular view. <clears throat> Having established that, it became very clear that the, the situation at the moment is not conducive <clears throat> for elections now. There is a need for a, sp a space so that the region here can interact, the parties, the stakeholders could interact, find a formula how to go forward from here. I think that to me <clears throat> was an important outcome, that we all agreed that there are matters we need to handle. We need to <clears throat> apply certain measures to ensure that the situation comes down. We are therefore in a better position to have whatever understanding it must emerge out of all the stakeholders who must say on the basis of all of this, this is what we think we need to do. <clears throat> and of course, uh, the decision also <clears throat> that the ministers are going to go uh, to Burundi to engage. Uh, given the time, the time uh, frame, the engagement is going to be quite intense so that we do not necessarily move away from the time frames that are given by the constitution. And I think there they should be an understanding to everybody that we've got it to do that. Whatever we come up with, which we believe, should be some consensus that should emerge for Burundi really to be able to move forward. What do you think are some of still very challenging um, issues that the parties or stakeholders need to overcome? No, it is the very first issue that I started with. The interpretation of, I think, of the Constitution is, is a critical issue. <clears throat> uh, parliament majority had a view, but <clears throat> the Constitutional Court has had its own view as well. Now once there is a, a court decision, <clears throat> that means we've got to look at it from that point of view. And that's a critical point. Now, <clears throat> you need people first to come down, to begin to look at this very calmly, to therefore say if this is what has happened, if it is true that there is a, a gray area in the constitution, how then do we address that? It could only be addressed by people who are not very uh, uh, excited, so to speak, who apply their mind uh, very <coughs> uh, fairly, uh, and then come up with the, with, with the solution. I think that's, a, that's an issue, because that's an issue that started everything. That issue remains the issue. It needs to be tackled from the reality of what are the facts and what are the interpretations and which is the correct interpretation.
How optimistic are you that um, it's going to happen this time, given what's happened uh, <laughs> since the last summit over the last two weeks? No. <clears throat> uh, I think we, we are all optimistic. The fact of the matter is that the situation in Burundi is, is very tense, is very unpredictable. I don't think anyone would want that to continue. I think everyone would want that situation to, to be resolved. Uh, it is just from that point of view. I don't think they are ready to, to prolong a tension of, of this kind. I think everybody is trying to find a way forward. And I think the participation of the region <coughs> is an important element to help the Burundi uh, to be able to move forward.